And these words were my introduction to Sergi Lorraine. And for as long as I have been studying photography and its great masters, I have never quite heard a photographer describing the act of making art through photography as the product of being in a state of grace. And we can think of grace in its sense of the word, as if it meant elegance, smoothness, but here the photographer was referring to the state of an almost divine assistance. And more than to question the idea, these wise words led me to question who the photographer was. From what I could gather, Lorraine was born in Santiago de Chile and he had studied music before engaging with photography, which he apparently took up in 1949, which was also the same year he began studying forestry at the University of California. And while living there, he was working part-time jobs and saving money to buy his first Leica. And after this, he continued taking photos. However, it was then that he went on to the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor and and he felt deeply confused and decided that he wanted to find himself and search for truth. And during this period he was also able to work on a photo lab on weekends where he learned about developing, processing and printing photos. However, soon after he abandoned his studies in Michigan and joined his family traveling through Europe and the East, where he came in contact with different visual arts which certainly impacted his photography. And upon returning to his native Santiago and Valparaiso, he began photographing the streets, paying particular tribute to the street children and their daily life. However, as time went on, he became dissatisfied with the way society worked and he struggled in terms of trying to find a way to make a living with his photography and in desperation he sent a collection of his photos to the New York Museum of Modern Art, where Edward Steinschen offered to buy two of his photos for the museum collection and this led to some attention brought to his work and he eventually started participating in exhibitions, began working for prestigious publications of the time, and of course became an associate of Magnum Photos. And honestly guys, after viewing his work and trying to take it all in, um, I was really 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 surprised and there was so much I learned. And one particular body of work that really touched me was his photos around the st street children in um, Santiago and Valparaiso, which he titled at the time Los Abandonados, which basically means the abandoned. And I really like this idea of kind of like looking at his work and it's like if I'm dreaming with my eyes open because basically I'm being confronted with images that, you know, are of course of children that, you know, suggestive of like the innocence, that beauty, purity of being a child. But then I'm being confronted with the harsh reality that they live in, in the streets. And, you know, I just look at this work and I can feel this idea of like, almost like there was this lyricism about his work. And later on, while well, I look at, for instance, his London photos, which are very different and very, you know, strong compositionally speaking amongst his most popular works, um, I feel like there's this idea that these two different bodies of work are kind of like binding under the same concept of like poetry visual poetry. It's kind of like a type of black and white poetry in, that I find in Lorraine's work. And even when I look at, for instance, uh, some of his portraits of the Campesinas in Bolivia, basically, you know, like they're just very, very 
you know, simplistic. Um, and I think the beauty of it relies in that and the dignity as well with which he captures his subjects. And this is actually very timely because the other day I watched a documentary on Don McCullen's photography and he talked about this idea of dignity when you're capturing your subject, which is something we've seen with other photographers as well, like Joseph Kudelka. So if your um, you know, work as a photographer revolves around capturing marginalized communities or you're thinking of doing like a project around that, I think one of the keys is perhaps you know, to explore this idea of the dignity of your subject. No matter what you do, capture them with dignity. And this was one of the things that McCullin said in documentary, and it resonated with me. Even though I obviously don't, you know, if you're familiar with my work, I don't photograph, you know, marginalized communities, but I feel like it's something that we should carry with our photography. Whatever we do, we should do it with dignity. And so it's something we can take, you know, as all, doesn't matter what kind of work we do. And I feel like, you know, coming back with this idea of a visual poetry, there's a few things that I think are keys to kind of like, you know, understand the, you know, how Lorraine creates this poetry and how we can as well as photographers. And the poetry of Sergio Lorraine in this case, in my humble opinion, relies on movement, whether that is different elements of the frame, such as hands, people, textures, animals, you know, also the placement of these subjects and the great accentuated contrasts of light and shadow, whether that is by creating different perspectives, adopting different angles, or by adding depth to his images by photographing from the inside to the outside, and vice versa. And lastly, the candid way he photographs its subjects, the expressions on their faces, the direction of their eyes, details of their hands, and these are all extremely important lessons we can take and value as photographers. And on a brief note, I want to bring his London images in probably a separate video because I feel like the book that was put together um, with these images functions as a counterpart to Robert Frank's The Americans. So keep an eye out for that video. In 1958, Lorraine was given a grant from the British Council to produce a series of photographs of London in the years to come. And he then took a series of photographs in the city which are now amongst his most famous images and he was, at this moment in time, at the height of his career, being a Magnum associate and eventually becoming a member, exhibitions, a lot of attention and commissioned work. However, Lorraine had always been a reclusive artist. He lived much of his life, from what I could gather and read from different websites and sources, conflicted about the differences between the rich and the poor, uh, the way society is run. Also, as a photographer, your role in capturing that and the type of assigned work he was getting. And I was trying to get a hold of his documentary, but unfortunately it wasn't available in this region. And, you know, I feel like it would have probably, you know, been kind of like a missing uh, piece to the puzzle as I'm trying to put together. Because what happened is that he abandoned photography completely at a really young age. And, you know, I think uh, basically he ended up moving to the northern part of Chile and, you know, he took on meditation, yoga, he was writing and, you know, painting. I think he took the odd photograph but never, like, commissioned work. He basically just disassociated or wanted to kind of, like, break away. Um, and I feel like, you know, it's interesting because... We have this idea of this artist that, you know, he was, he worked and he dreamed about this sort of like, you know, achieving this place um, and in photography. And then once he was there, he kind of gave it all up. And, you know, obviously we can question why. I think it's, you know, obviously a combination of reasons. I feel like perhaps the reality um, was very different from what he thought it would be, uh, the dreams that he had. Um, I think, like, you know, a lot of things contributed to this. I know that um, at some point he had been married, but he felt trapped and he kind of, like, moved away to, you know, a remote area of the country. Um, he enjoyed that life that photography was giving him to kind of, like, roam around and photograph, but then he was conflicted about the types of subjects, the type of things that he had to photograph. I know that before, I think a year or two before he actually quit photography, he had one of his body of works um, turned down and he was around the wedding of the um, ruler of Iran at the time. Um, I know that in 1968, he met up with a Bolivian guru 
there was basically he was responsible for or the founder of you know a school of thought there was basically around a human potential movement and it was all about like you know different things um, like yoga meditation you know the eastern sort of like you know philosophies and I think that I might have helped and I feel like you know Lorraine broke away from this and actually in trying to break away he uh, successfully burned some of his work but he wanted to basically burn it all and destroy all of his work and all his photography work and what we're seeing right now is actually um, the product of like obviously people that you know kept his work perhaps buyers um, you know um, agencies that he worked with and of course collectors such as you know um, Joseph Kudelka and Cartier-Bresson who actually bought uh, photos from Lorraine but I feel like there's so much we can learn from um, this and so it's conflicting for me to see this work but I feel like it's also a unique video because we are talking about a unique photographer in terms of his photography but also his life story um, and talking about um, you know unique and talking about like you know a video that can give us some info and advice and food for thought um, Lorraine wrote something to a family member in a letter when he was asked about advice uh, for people that are trying to be photographers. In this case, it was someone in his family that was trying to be a photographer and basically asked him for advice. And he wrote something very interesting. He wrote, Don't ever force things. Follow your own taste and nothing else. You are life, and life is what you choose. What you do not like, don't look at it. It's not good. You're the only criterion, but still look at everyone else. And I feel like what he's trying to say is basically to act like, you know, a filter. Basically, you can look at everything, but filter what you like, filter what is for you, the themes and ideas that you like to explore with your work. Of course, look at the masters, take lessons, take inspiration from them. But at the end of the day, keep your identity and authorship of who you are as a photographer and what you want to capture. And I feel like actually this mimics what we've been doing here on a channel, what I've been doing with you guys. You know, we've been going through so many artists, so many uh, great photographers, studying what they have to say on different levels. Um, and I feel like that's, you know, obviously, um, you know, a, a, a part of our growth as photographers. Of course, I take certain things from the videos. You guys are going to take different things from the videos because not everyone is the same. Not everyone is a street photographer. Not everyone is a documentarist. Not everyone has that ambition and, you know, we're all different in our unique way. And that's, of course, the beauty of photography because we all see beauty in different ways and we all capture it in our own way. Um, and yeah, I guess that, you know, this is a really, really interesting video, gave a lot of food for thought. Um, and so if you want to know, learn more about Sergio Lorraine, links will be down below. And down below as well, you can find links to my work, links to, you know, what I've been doing, my social media and all of that lot. Um, and I just wanted to say before the video ends that I want to thank everyone that has been buying a print. It's been really, really good. I really appreciate it. I'm currently doing a massive sale, 50% off. I'm clearing the collection off from last year. And I hope you guys, you know, like enjoy it once you receive it. And I want to thank you so much for watching the video, supporting the channel. Write your thoughts down below. What do you think of this video? Other photographers that you know of that have like a unique life story as well. They'll be interesting to bring onto the channel because I'll be doing my best to do it. And yeah, I guess that it's all for today. So stay safe, keep shooting, and yeah, I'm out. <laughs>